Hello students! In this video we'll talk about reproductive strategies again and we're going to focus on mating systems. And um, I have you, I've asked you to look at several videos that are not my prepared lecture videos. One from Hank Green on monogamy and another that um, shows us a little bit about polyandry in a human society. And I want you to read those. For this lecture, I'm also asking you to read a chapter in Mother Nature and work through a set of questions about uh, that chapter. This chapter focuses on mating systems in humans and some of the choices or constraints that um, humans, and particularly females, have been faced with. And the, the choices that they're left with are not necessarily the best choices for females. Um, but I wanted you to know that ahead of time. So let's get started on this lecture. I will switch over to my PowerPoint. Oops. And begin. So we're looking at um, mating systems. We'll focus on the different mating systems and the evolution of a polygynous mating system and even multiple mating systems within the same species. All right? So... The first thing I want to point out is there's a video on monogamy. That's Hank Green's video from the Sci Show that's worth watching. It's interesting and informative. But we're going to get started by thinking about different mating systems. And it turns out that um, mating systems are subject to strong selection, selective pressure. And we often see that mating systems are dynamic, even within a single species. There are changes that can happen one species isn't stuck with a particular type of mating system. And so we'll start with monogamy and we'll take a look at that. Monogamy is defined as having one mate, right? Um, having one mate during a given breeding season. One male, one female during a given breeding season. That doesn't mean a lifelong monogamy, but it could. It could mean serial monogamy, okay? Or mating for life. So here are some examples of animals that do this. 92% of birds are socially monogamous. They form pair bonds. They work together to raise young. Socially monogamous means that, for the most part, they're monogamous. Um, they certainly stick together as a pair, but there may be some extra pair copulating going on. And those extra pair copulations can lead to um, males raising young that are not their own at the nest, males being cuckolded, right? Um, some mammals, um, almost three, almost 5%, we think, of mammals are monogamous or socially monogamous, and even some fish and some reptiles too. So things like um, certain gibbons, um, mute swans, convict cichlids, giant rats, shingleback skinks, a variety of different animals have um, evolved to have a monogamous mating system. Okay, um, one of the studies that uh, I found interesting um, that I've talked about in my animal behavior class is a study done on uh, mate choice in, in, in a mouse called the old field mice. Old field mice are socially monogamous. Males help a ton at the nest. They help the female build, uh, build dig a burrow build their nest. They tend to pups, licking them, huddling them, keeping them warm, feeding them, doing all of those um, uh, pup tending activities. And they're, um, they, they form what are called lifelong or long-term mon uh, monogamous pair bonds with each other. And these researchers, Ryan and Altman, decided to study male mate choice because males have a strong investment in parenting. They, they should be choosy about their mates. And how does that affect, how does their mate choice affect their fitness? How many offspring they can leave behind? I just wanted to show you this interesting slide. Um, in this experiment, the researchers asked a male to choose between two females and he would choose a female. Then they either put that male with his choice or put the male with his not choice, his rejection, his rejected female. And they then um, allowed them to form pair bonds and breed. And they found that 
um, when a male got to choose his preferred female, when he got to breed with his preferred female, he um, sired more pups than when he was forced to choose uh, his rejected female. This suggests that males are, with their male choice, are choosing females that are compatible with them, that and help that 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 will help them increase their reproductive success together. Um, this study just shows that it wasn't something about the female. It isn't that the female was just a better female, um, but it was really his compatibility. Uh, so the question comes up, well, why on earth would males adopt a monogamous strategy? Is this ever adapted? Because typically males will try to mate with many females because mating isn't very costly and the possibilities of raising lots of offspring or bearing, siring lots of offspring are so high by mating with other females. Why ever adopt uh, a monogamous strategy? It, it's possible, and we'll talk about this in a minute again. There's something called the mate assistance hypothesis that suggests that if animals are living in a place where there are few resources, limited resources, um, then males may actually benefit by staying with a female and helping at the nest or helping, the, helping raise the offspring. It increases the survival of the offspring so much so that it's worth staying, if you will, rather than finding other females to mate with. Okay? Perhaps this was true in humans as well and why we form um, um, socially monogamous relationships Humans may, um, males may have helped protect the children from uh, infanticide or protect the child or, or provide or provision the children with food, um, those kinds of things, right? How, what are some of the proximate mechanisms of monogamy? This is interesting as well and have been really well studied in our favorite animal, the prairie roll. Oh, look at those cuties. Our prairie voles have been well studied because, of course, they form pair bonds. And this is an unusual thing in, uh, in mammals. Um, and by proximate mechanisms, remember we're thinking about what are the triggers of the causes of monogamy. So can we find, you know, a neurological cause or a hormonal cause, for example? And I just wanted to point out that people are studying this. And that's why I'm giving you this example. Um, these researchers looked at... Uh, the brains of prairie voles and look particularly at what's called the nucleus acubens. This is an area of the brain that's important in, um, in a variety of things, in pleasure, in reward, reinforcement, aggressiveness. Uh, it's huge. And they looked at receptors in this part of the brain, uh, D1 and D2 receptors, so dopamine receptors. There are two different kinds. And they had already found that uh, D2 receptors, um, when they're activated, this facilitates pair bonding. It's, um, it facilitates affiliative or friendly behavior when D2 receptors are active. When D1 receptors are active, this inhibits pair bonding and it can lead to aggression. Okay, so what the researchers found in males that was rather interesting is after a male forms a pair bond, there is a surge of D1 receptor activation. So suddenly these D1 receptors are activated. What does that do? It doesn't increase aggression toward his pair bond. What that does in the male is increase aggression toward any other stranger female that he sees. So the activation of D1 receptors in, um, influences his behavior or it maybe uh, supports monogamy because it prevents him from forming any kind of friendship with other females that are not his, his partner. Um, if researchers block the D1 receptors, then males are no longer aggressive with stranger females and they're affiliative and they will mate with them too. So uh, this D1 receptor activation after pair bond formation seems really important in maintaining that pair bond and maintaining the monogamy. It's kind of interesting. Okay, how did monogamy evolve, especially when we think about the uh, benefits to males? Typically, males don't benefit by a monogamous um, situation. So researchers have really studied this and come up with three hypotheses for how monogamy could evolve. 
One of them is called the maid assistance or the parental paternal care, sorry, paternal care hypothesis that monogamy ar arises when there's um, selection for paternal care. Maybe there aren't very many resources. The cost of raising offspring is really high. Um, the, you need to have another adult around to protect the young from some threat. So mate assistance is the best choice for males and females. And so males, so we see the evolution of at least socially, socially monogamous animals. The second hypothesis is a more of a mate guarding hypothesis. Um, monogamy arises kind of as a second choice when males are unable to defend multiple females. So males, in, all, in many situations, especially think about mammals, um, males, one male will often defend a harem of females. Think about elk, for example. Um, one male, many females, right? And he can defend them. If he can defend them, he gets to mate with all of them. But monogamy might result as, a, as um, if there's selection um, strong selection because males can't defend multiple females. So maybe resources are limited or spread out, and so females are spread out. Or maybe females are intolerant of each other, so they spread out. And no longer can a male um, guard a huge harem of females. Maybe he can only guard one female successfully. So maybe the mate guarding hypothesis um, led to evolution of monogamy. Or the infanticide hypothesis. Maybe there's so much infanticide by unrelated males happening that it's best to stay with your partner and guard your offspring, defend them from infanticide. Okay, so any one of these or all three of them could contribute to monogamy in different animals. Several researchers, Lucas and Clutton Brock, um, did this massive study. Phy, uh, it's called a phylogenetic study on uh, 2,500 species of mammals. And they were looking at, gee, how did monogamy evolve? And um, they looked at things like the density of the animals. They looked at feeding habits, behavior of the offspring, and they did this massive phylogeny to study out to study when did mon when does monogamy evolve when does it show up in our phylogeny a phylogeny is just this um, picture of all the evolutionary relationships of of mammals in this case and so they were looking at hmm when do we see monogamy happening why does it happen and so they came up with a hypothesis that said monogamy arises when males are unable to defend access to multiple females it's hard to read here on my slide. Monogamy arises because of the mate guarding hypothesis. And here's what they found. Um, they found that um, in most animal groups, the ancestral condition was be a solitary female. Hang out by yourself. Males may be roaming around, finding females from all different areas. Um, but females will, you know, mate with multiple males, possibly. Who knows? But they're spread out, okay? And males are kind of roaming around mating with multiple females. What could lead to social monogamy is if females begin competing with each other, females are intolerant of each other, or females are simply spread out very far. Resources are, are thin and females are very spread out, then males cannot defend more than one female. So social monogamy could evolve because of low female densities, females being competitive with each other, um, low female densities could arise because of something like um, uh, uh, low, um, re few resources, okay? And they didn't see that in infanticide played a big role at all. Um, uh, and then this third step is, well, what happens if we live in an unpredictable environment? We might even get cooperative breeding, but we're not talking about that right yet. Another researcher in the same year, <laughs> this is interesting, studied primates and did this massive phylogenetic study on 230 primate species. They found that 25% of primates are socially monogamous, so that's pretty high, but here's a couple of interesting things. And they found that um, infanticide, paternal care, female ranging patterns, so that would be this mate guarding hypothesis, they're all related to social monogamy, but only infanticides 
predates monogamy in primates. So what these researchers think is because infanticide shows up first, monogamy may have evolved as a mechanism to prevent infanticide um, of infants, right? So their, their conclusion was that infanticide probably triggered uh, the evolution of monogamy, at least in primates. Interesting, huh? So lots of different research out there uh, suggesting that maybe there are multiple pathways to monogamy. I think that's the take home message in this case. All right, we'll move on in our next video to polygyny.